And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. One of the biggest complaints that I often get uh, when, I'm, when I go out and I do lectures on using games in education is there's not enough science games out there. Plenty of games to teach English, plenty of games to teach history. Um, there's a decent amount of literature games, but not many science. Well, here's one called Wrong Chemistry. I guess that maybe is not so useful if it's wrong chemistry. Well, let me show you how to play the game. The game has a silly overtone to it, but it is somewhat educational. Let me show you. At the beginning of the game, we set a molecule up like this. Six hexagons surrounding another one with three white discs, three black discs, and a few extra discs over here on the side. Players are gonna be drawing from this deck of cards here, which shows the different elements of the periodic table. Well, maybe the elements of the periodic table. Here you have cobalt, and instead of, and we have sadium with these troll faces, which was a meme that should have been retired, I think a day after it came out. And so, <laughs> Krypton and so they're based on real elements, and some of them are real, like nickel, nickel and other ones of them, well, bromine and uh, hadium, you know, well, whatever. Each of these is worth a certain number of ideas, which is one to three, and just think of those as victory points. Now, what you'll do on your turn is you have four actions that you can take. One of these actions is to take a disc off of a hex and place it to the side. So there's one action I've taken, or two actions. Another action is to put a disc onto. So that's another action to do that. Another action is to take one of these hexagons that's empty and move it to a new spot. You can't move this one, the center one, but you can move the other ones. Another action would be to take a disc and move it to an empty place. Another action is to discard a card from your hand. That's if you don't like it and you want to get a better card for next turn. As you're moving these discs and things around, what you're trying to do is you are trying to form a specific element. For example, if I put this here, and you can see it's in the regular shape here, white, black, white, black, and I've done that, then on my turn I can put this in front of me into a score pile. You'll notice that most of the ones are pretty simple to accomplish. They're just the circle of hexagons. Sometimes there's a little bit of a difference, while the twos are more complex with the hexagons moving and then the threes are even more complex. This one even needs a black uh, disc into the center. Uh, another thing that you can do, there's two cards here to the side. One of them is Restartium, and Restartium you can just put it back to the original way it was supposed to look. Extra Movium, you can discard a card from your score pile to get three more actions. Now you will only do that, I would assume, if you can finish a two or a three, and even then you're giving up a point to get two or three points, which might be worth it. Also, if for some miracle you manage to get uh, cards that are have sequential elemental numbers on them, like 15, 16, 17, 18, you get an extra point for each one that you have in a series like that. Uh, that's kind of random, but it is what it is. And at the end of your turn, you'll draw back up to four cards and you keep going. And so you'll be going around and playing until the deck runs out of cards. When someone can't draw up to four, the game is over. And whoever has the most ideas in their deck or in the score pile in front of them is the winner. There's a mini expansion that you might be able to get called the Scientist Card Pack. And in this, there's a whole bunch of scientists with silly pictures. And by the way, you know, the pictures in this whole game are kind of silly, but these each have a special ability. Like, for example, this guy can move a hexagon for no energy cost. This guy can put a black disc on for no energy cost. This guy can put a white disc on. And so they each have a special ability that you can give each player. The game actually comes with a little periodic table in here, and the, the uh, different elements are based on the elements of the periodic table, but I don't know how much you actually learn. It's not like the, the different shapes that you're making are exactly the same. No, you're just moving things around. But still, it's a good way, I don't know, it's a good excuse for you science teachers to have a game to play, I suppose. Um, the game itself, well, uh, I got a few problems with it. One, it's too long. Uh, it, it feels very repetitive. You just seem to do the same thing over and over again. I would prefer that you play to a certain number of points. Maybe the first person to, say, 
10 points or eight points is the winner. And that would give people an incentive. Also, that restartium is really annoying because you might move a few things to mess your opponent up and then they just restart it and put it all back. Or, you know, when, when you're playing the game, you essentially have to, to me, I just kind of look at the ceiling when my opponents are going. And the reason for that is, is I don't want to get excited like, oh, they're moving it to where I want it to be. Well, the next person's going to move it away. So you really can't do any kind of forward planning. You just got to wait to your turn and then take four actions and try to get it to look the way you want it to look. So that's an interesting thing. I think this would be geared more towards kids who would like this sort of thing, who would like to be able to put these together. Shut the door. But for the most part, uh, I, it's, it was just, it's a little boring for adults. Yeah, the artwork's funny and the idea is interesting, you know, where you take actions to manipulate the molecule to look the way you want it to. But in the end, it's just not that exciting and uh, really not awfully that fun. So it's educational, not so much from a science standpoint, but from a spatial aspect standpoint, and I might use it with kids. But as an adult, there are other fillers that I would prefer to play. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. Shut the door! Mm -hmm.